In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, perhaps we should rewrite the Bible here. If your enemy is hungry and you're irritated at him, he's on his own. Don't worry about feeding him. If he's thirsty and he's caused you problems, don't be merciful. Don't give him anything. Let him take care of himself. It's not what it says. It says the attitude that you and I must have is an attitude of mercy. Learning from Joseph. He was a righteous man. And he demonstrated mercy. He was merciful. And so, for you and me, God calls us to mercy and not vengeance. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And so we learn to be merciful when disappointment comes into our lives. But secondly, notice this, we learn to be patient when disappointment comes into our lives. We are not like Kevin Waits. That's his real name. Do you know the story of Kevin Waits? Well, this incident happened on May the 20th, 2008. Kevin Waits got tired of waiting. He called for a cab in Waco, Texas, but the driver didn't arrive fast enough. Waits called 911 15 consecutive times to express his frustration about having to wait on a cab. The dispatcher repeatedly told him, Sir, the police cannot help you with such an issue. Well, after the 15th call, the law enforcement officers obliged Waits and gave him a handcuff ride to the police station. Ironically, authorities later discovered that Waits didn't even have enough money, the $26 that was required, to pay for the cab service. He was impatient. He would not wait. Well, we read in our text that Joseph was a patient man. There's a key phrase here that I want you to underline and see. It's in verse 20, chapter 1, verse 20. But after he had considered this. After he had considered this. After he had considered what? After he had considered all that was going on with the woman to whom he was engaged. After he considered the whole situation. Now in my mind, I see him praying. I see him being patient. He's disappointed. He's bothered. But he understands that he doesn't want to get the proverbial cart before the horse. And he's demonstrating patience in the midst of a troublesome situation after he had considered this now how long he considered it we don't know but here's the implication it's clear he did not make a quick decision he did not decide quickly what he was going to do with Mary in his mind he knew she was wrong. He knew by way of law that she was wrong. And he knew that she was supposed to be stoned to death. But he prayed. And he waited. And he waited. And he prayed. He considered every single thing that was going on. God never gets in a hurry. And neither should we. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if God had already spoken to Joseph ahead of time and said, hey, this is going to happen to Mary. Go ahead and, and, and understand this and don't be judgmental. But it didn't. God laid it out where he found out afterwards. You see the lesson? The lesson is, for all of us, is that we cannot... Jump to conclusions. We cannot get in a hurry. We cannot go ahead when we don't have all the facts. But quite often we do. Quite often we hastily move forward. And then quite often we regret. 
We regret for making decisions that we made during that time when we made the decisions based on emotions and not prayer and patience. Folks, the temptation for all of us is when things don't go the way we want them to go, when we're disappointed, when we're bothered, the temptation is for us to launch and go ahead and make a decision based on our emotions. Go ahead and do something that we regret later and we wish that we had not done. Here's what I've learned. Do not make a decision based on emotions. Emotions will mislead you. Boy, I stand before you. I could write a book on the numerous times that I have launched before patiently praying and considering every single thing. That's why we're told in the book of James to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Slow to speak and quick to listen. Quite often, we are quick to respond and to talk and to react. James says, no, 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 don't do that. You reflect, you think about, this is what we'd say, you mull over what all's going on surrounding that situation. You consider every area. Do not get in a hurry, but pray and be patient. Give God time to work out His will in your circumstances. What God is saying to me, allow me to work out my will in all that's going on in your life. And so we learn to be merciful when dis disappointment comes into our lives. We, we learn to be patient when disappointment comes into our lives. But Joseph teaches us one other thing. We learn to be sensitive when disappointment comes into our lives. Now, sensitive to what? We learn to be sensitive to God's will when disappointment comes into our lives. Look back at the text. Verse 20. Notice these words. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now what was taking place was not what Joseph had planned. As a husband-to-be, I'm sure he had plans, plans to settle down in a cozy little home. He would work in his carpenter shop, and, and Mary would keep house. They would raise a normal little family in a normal little town. That was his plan. That was what he thought should happen. God had different plans, didn't He? His plans were far greater. But they would begin with Joseph's disappointment. When God wants to do something significant in our lives, He often begins with disappointment. Now grasp that. When God wants to do something amazing and remarkable in our lives, He oftentimes begins with disappointment. Maybe it's a disappointment over a relationship. Maybe it involves you being passed over for, for a promotion. Perhaps it's a financial situation that, that didn't materialize as, as you hoped. Here's the key. If we maintain our sensitivity to God's will, disappointment can be a stepping stone to something great for every one of us. Instead of an end, it can be a new beginning.